hello everyone. The topic I chose to present today is handling various synchronized with Flutter in Android and iOS. My name is Suto Tueton and I'm working as a senior Android developer in Singapore Press Holding. Although I'm working as an Android developer, I learned Flutter and falling in love with it, so I continue learning it in my spare time. I have been working as a mobile developer for six years with Android and Flutter. <clears throat> when working with Flutter, we need to test on both Android and iOS. Our app should be able to have the same look and feel for both operating system. Even if it's in the same OS, if the device resolution are different, then UI will be shown differently. Today, I'm going to talk about how to use Flutter widget for responsive UI for different sequences and handling portrait and landscape orientation. <clears throat> the first one is responsive UI for different sequences. Flutter keeps expanding its cross-platform support by including web, Linux, Windows, and recently Mac OS. These are some of widgets in Flutter that especially come in handy for responsive design. Media query, layout beta, orientation beta, safe area, aspect ratio, flexible, expanded, fractionally size box. Today, I won't be explaining all of them, but I will talk about most of them, which I often use in Flutter. The first one is media query. Media query is a great widget to make your app responsive across devices with different sequences. The media query object itself doesn't include much except the media query data property. The media query data object retains information about the app's window. In a mobile app, this would correspond to your device screen. The screen size and orientation can be obtained by assessing its property. So in this example, uh, you can see if we want the screen width, then we can call it like media query dot of contest dot size dot width. If we want the screen height, then we can call media query dot height. And uh, same for the orientation, we just need to call the media query dot orientation. Based on the width, height, and orientation of the devices, we can control our responsive UI. What if we want our widget to uh, uh, to cover only half of the screen? We can do it like this. Uh, we uh, we can call the media query dot size dot width divided by two. Then we will get the half of the screen width. Uh, if we want the thirty percent of the screen width, then we can call media query dot size dot width into zero point three. This is a full code of Flutter to get this screen. So this screen has the two container. The first one is the blue container, which has the 30% of screen height and 100% screen width. And another one is responsive pattern. <clears throat> so inside the first children object, we will call the media query dot size dot width for the 100% screen width. And the, for the height, media query dot height into 0 0.3. So that we can get the 30% of the screen height and add the color stop blue to the color. And inside the time widget, we will add our container. <clears throat> For the pattern, uh, we will call the media query dot size dot width to get the 100% width, and then add stamp pattern. And inside the time widget, we can add the race pattern widget. So this was how we use media query. Another widget is safe area. When designing the layout of widget, we consider different type of dev uh, devices and they are preoccupying constraint of screen like status bar, notch, navigation bar, etc. As you can see in the photo, safe area makes UI dynamic and adaptive to devices component. It is basically a pattern widget. Internally, safe area uses media query to check the dimension of the display screen and include extra pattern if needed. This is how I normally use safe area. It will check safe area in all dimension. So we can simply wrap the safe area inside the body widget. And also you can decide whether to apply intrusions in a particular direction by changing the Boolean value to true or false. So if we don't want the left side of the safe area, then we can add the false in it. That's all for the safe area. 
The another widget to achieve responsive UI is fractionally size box. This is great if you need to support different screens or parent widget. So in this example, uh, we will call the fractionally size box inside the child widget. And we want the 70% of the parent container size so we can add the 0.7 to the width factor. This is very easy to use, right? Expanded widget is a widget that expands a child inside a row or a column. So it needs to be used in uh, inside a row or a column widget to work properly. It takes up all the available space along its main axis. If all the widgets are wrapped around expanded widget inside a row or column, then space will be divided equally. Flat down widget is basically the same as the expanded widget. But uh, there is a slight difference which makes flexible widget as the name suggests flexible to use. Let's find out what is different between them. This is a normal row widget with three containers and we have the container 1, container 2 and container 3 here. I will explain how expanded and flexible are working by using this example. Expanded widget control its child's flexibility to expand and fill the available space in the main axis of a row or a column. So in here, uh, for the container 1, width is 100, and the 49, uh, container 3, width is 100. So for the container 2, it will expand as much as the parent size is available. Flexible widget has a flex and fit property. The difference between expanded widget and flexible widget is flexible does not require the child to fill the available space. Let's check the code to understand better. Uh, in this code, I use flexible widget for all containers and use flexfit.loose. The fit property is the main difference from expanded. If you compare the codes between the flexible widget and expanded widget, the major difference that you will notice is Flexible widget can use flex and fit property to shape or position your child widget inside a row or a column. Here it uses flex properties. By using this, flexible widget resize its widget according to parent size. Let's think a uh, parent container has the five column. So we give the three to the flex property. So the container three will have the three column as a uh, as a width and so container 2 will have the two column of the parent container and container 1 doesn't have the flex so default will be the one that's all for the expanded and flexible widget and uh, if you compare to the expanded and flexible widget so expanded widget uh, doesn't have the flex and fit properties so it will divide it equally for all their children. And flexible has the fit and flex property. So you can have the control of uh, your properties under your children. The next title is Handling Portrait and Landscape Orientation. For this case, we can use orientation beta. This widget is useful if we change the UI based on the orientation of the parent widget. It obtains the orientation data by comparing the width and height of the parent widget. So in this example, we call the orientation beta and inside it, if the orientation is portrait, then we will return two column. If the landscape, then we will return the three column. Next, uh, we are going to see a real use case of orientation beta. Let's see, uh, there are two screens fragment A and fragment B. In our mobile phone, the screen size is only available for one screen. What I want to do is if I click on fragment A, I will go to fragment B and fragment B will be shown on the screen. But in a tablet, I want to calculate if there is enough space to show both fragments. If there is, then I will show both screens side by side. So how do we do this? <clears throat> If we want to use the same logic as I showed in the previous example, we check if the screen is in portrait mode and construct a particular layout if that is the case. If not, we construct a horizontal layout for the screen. Bit particle layout and bit horizontal layout are methods I have, uh, I have written to create the respective layout. 
We can also check the orientation at any point in the code, inside or outside of the orientation data using orientation.portrait. And there's also an, another way to do it. All we need to do is define two widgets, one for fragment A and one for fragment B. We simply check the device has enough width to handle both widgets. If it does, we show both widgets. If not, uh, if the device does not have a network to support both, we only show the fragment A and navigate to a separate screen to show the fragment B. We first need to check the device width. To get the width, we use media query dot size dot width. The size gives us the height and width of the device in dB. Let's set the minimum width to 600 dB for showing fragment B. If the screen is large, we add fragment B, and if it is not, we return an empty container. We use the expanded widget around it to fill the screen or divide the screen into proportions in case of a larger screen. So expanded allows each widget to fill half of the screen or even a certain percentage by setting width as we want. So this is all for my presentation. and. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any question, I would be happy to answer. Thanks, Sue. Um, I think you have a fan, uh, someone harsh on YouTube commented, <laughs> hey, Sue, you go, go. <laughs> yeah, um, it's my teammate. <laughs> oh, nice. Hi, Harsh. Thanks for joining us today. Um, yeah, I think we have a question. Um, Jerma asked, what if we wrap scaffold with safe area? Uh, scaffold has to be the first widget of the uh, should I have, uh, first widget of the application. So you cannot use any widget above the scaffold. Yeah. Then you will have the error. Yep, we hope that answer your questions. Um and then we have a question from registration as well. So um you mentioned that you are an Android engineer, uh, but you also learn Flutter. So uh, for all the Android developers out there, should they learn Flutter? Uh, uh, I think like, yeah, I will uh, answer it from my personal experience. Mm. So, uh, when I was working, uh, before I learned the Flutter, so when I do my own project or something, then I like, I want to release to the Play Store. And then I also want to release to the App Store, right? But I don't know how to write the iOS. So, uh, I learned the Flutter and yeah, so Flutter is you just need to write one and you can publish the two application. So I think that's great. And uh, another one is I don't recommend the Flutter for the really big project because uh, Flutter is using the uh, native library for like, for example, uh, camera or mic using the mic or so like, you want to do something, but uh, there's no library for it. Then you have to write your own library. So yeah, and if you want to con uh, really have to control your application, like you want to control everything, then Flutter is not for it. So you can use the like Flutter for only the showing simple, uh, like simple operation, like showing the data or like connecting the uh, like small things. Then it should be okay. Yeah. So like uh, trying out things or uh, smaller projects, uh, maybe Flutter is a bit more suitable. Yeah, yeah. For normal project, Flutter. Uh, should be okay. Flutter is a like really wide network, so there is a, a lot of library you can choose from. But what if you want to do something that yeah. isn't library? Yeah, then you have to start everything over again. <laughs> our, our Keith asked. Um, currently, ha um, the person is having problem with white spaces for screens that have large screen height. So new phones like Ga Galaxy S twenty one Ultra, iPhone Pro Max. Um, yeah, how do you handle this issue? Uh, for this one, I need more information, like what kind of white spaces it means. So I will assume the saturation. Maybe the widget he wants to show is really small and the separate side is uh, so large. So it will have like more space left at the bottom. So in that kind of saturation, then as uh, I show in my slide, we can use the expanded. So the children widget will be expanded as much as the screen width and size, uh, width and height. So yeah, there will be no more white space. I hope it can answer, yeah, because I don't know the saturation, uh, what kind of saturation, yeah. Yeah, 